Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, PFI. Come on, PFI. Let's get to our feet and give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 At this time, we will have the processional for our PFI pastors, beginning with Pastor Imani Carthon, Faith Church of Glenville, Cleveland, Ohio. Pastor Ronnie Lee, Nehemiah Christian Center Ministries, Harvey, Illinois. Pastor Larry Trice, Tabernacle of David, Lansing, Michigan. Pastors Michael and Patience in Guinea, Perfecting Word of Truth Church, the Republic of South Africa. Pastor Brenda Stepney, Perfecting Strength from Within Church, Prince Frederick, Maryland. Pastor Eric Douglas, the Fresh Oil Church, Lebanon, Tennessee. Pastor Jason Mitchell, Perfecting Love Community Church, Memphis, Tennessee. Followed by our ecclesiastical elders, Pastor Kenneth Fairley, Mount Carmel Ministries, Pastor Thomas Bibby, Pastor Donnie McClurkin. Please rise as our bishop is led out by Elder Roy Haynes. Let's give a big God bless you to the pastor of Perfecting Church, the pastor of Perfecting Church Toledo, and the presiding bishop, bishop-elect Marvin L. Winans. Come on, let's give God praise for him. Fellowship International all over the world. Welcome to Holy Convocation 2022. We're, we're at the last day. We're at the last day. But I got to tell you, it's not time for us to let up off the gas. We have to give God our all. We're going in today. I, I, I used to play sports about 100 pounds ago. And, and what my coach used to always tell me is leave it all on the court. Today, we're going to leave it all in the sanctuary. We're going to praise God like we've never praised Him before. Hallelujah. We're going to take this thing higher. God has been taking us to a place since Wednesday. And we're not going to let off the gas today. We're going to give Him praise. We're going to give Him honor. And we're going to worship His name. Hallelujah. If you're here to give God praise today, let me hear you shout. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. We have had a wonderful week. God has not only been giving us words, not only been giving us nuggets, he has been imparting in us the things that we need as we continue to move forward. If, if this convocation didn't teach you anything, it should have taught you, you can't miss a service. You, you can't miss an empowerment session. You can't miss a general service. When we do convocation, when we give God praise, when we give him glory and honor, we know we need all that he has for us. So I want to thank you for you all that are here today. 
I want to thank you for hanging in there with us. I want to thank you for helping to set an atmosphere where God can speak, an atmosphere where God can move. And so we glorify him today. We honor him today. Come on, join me in a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we honor and thank you, O God, for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you, O God, because we know, O God, that since you have begun this good work, O God, in convocation, that you're going to complete it today, O God. So God, have your way in us. I pray right now, O God, that if there is anything troubling us, if there's anything binding us, that you, O God, strip those things from us, that you, O God, may get the glory out of all that is said and all that is done. We're not going to let up, God. We're not going to let up, God. We're going to give you all that's in us that you may be glorified and that we may affect the lives of other people in other places. You have your way today. You be glorified today, oh God. I pray right now, oh God, that we take the limits off, that you can take us to higher heights, deeper depths in you, oh God. We honor you, God, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. I, I, I don't know if, if, if the folk on Van Dyke heard you. Somebody shout glory. Come on, come on, we need to get it all the way down the mound. Somebody shout glory! Hallelujah, we'll be having our scripture from Pastor Douglas. Amen, what a time, what a time, what a time we've had on this week, hallelujah. I've been tasked to read the scripture on today. Amen, John chapter 14. And I'll begin reading at the 15th verse. It says, if ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Somebody say, he's in me. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But seek ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judah said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and he will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you. Bring ye present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you the word of God for the people of God and all of God's people said together, amen. Come on, come on, come on. Let's give God a hand clap of praise, Pastor Douglas, pastor of the Fresh Oil Church in our southern region. Now, now, if you haven't done it, if you haven't done it, uh, uh, go ahead and pull out your cell phones. We need to make sure that we need to get this word out to other people in other places that Holy Convocation, the last day of Holy Convocation 2022 has begun. Get your phones, get your phones, get your phones, and hit the share button. Let's get the word out that Holy Convocation, the last day for 2022 has begun. At this time, at this time, we're gonna have our PFI praise team come with a selection. Come on, let's give them a big God bless you. Hallelujah. Come on, I need somebody to shout hallelujah. Come on, I need somebody to shout hallelujah. Come on and put those hands Go 
Oh, oh. 
Hallelujah. Come on, come on. As you stand to your feet, let's give a good God bless you, a big God bless you to a portion of our PFI Mass Choir. Come on, let's give God praise for them.
from honoring our great leader. Everyone, please stand and give God praise for our very own Bishop elect Marvin L. Winans. Come on, come on, come on. Thank God for our leader. Hallelujah. We, 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 also, we also praise God and honor all the spouses of PFI pastors. The, the Lamonts had to go back to England, but we honor Pastor G, her husband, and we honor Pastor Lamont. We honor our first ladies of PFI. First ladies, please stand and come on, let's give them a big God bless you. And as always, we honor our international mother, Mama, Mother Winans. We love you, Mother Winans. Come on, come on, let's give God praise. At this time, we're going to have Brother David Buford, the Minister of Music of Perfecting Church. He's coming. Let's say amen as he comes. Amen. Praise the Lord, PFI. Praise the Lord. Amen. My name is uh, Brother David Buford. Um, before, let me give honor to our bishop and my pastor, Bishop-elect Marvin L. Winer. Oh, y'all got to make some noise because I'm up here. Yeah. Yeah. And to our first lady, Lady Deneen Winans. Yeah. Yeah. And to all the pastors of PFI and all the ministers, all the saints and friends, we're just happy to be here on this morning. Um, before I do what I'm called to do, I just have to do this. I just want to thank this wonderful music ministry of PFI. Come on, now y'all gotta clap, come on. Stand up on your feet for this. Y'all shouting and they singing. Y'all gotta clap for them. Make some noise, come on. I want the world to hear how wonderful our PFI music ministry is. Hey Amen. Um, um, some are not here, but I'm, I'm gonna get this camera. And to those that are watching that have been a part of the PFI music ministry, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Clap, clap so they can hear you in the cyber sanctuary. You know, with COVID, we haven't been able to get back to our full choir. But those, if we had people coming from Ohio, um, Lansing. They all came and they served so wonderfully. I just wanted to come up here and say thank you so much to our band. Let's say amen to our band. We got Brother Perfecting Zone, Brother Jomar Harris. We got Minister Tim Miller. We got Christopher Brooks, James Bell, and PCT's own, <laughs> David Williams. <laughs> All right, all right, I got that out the way. But um, I've been called up here to introduce our musical guest artist, who was a man that came to us. He's been, he's no stranger to perfecting church. But uh, we had our third Sunday live musical, Shameless Plug, watch on third Sundays at three o'clock. We have what's called third Sunday live. And this man right here, brother Darius Twyman, he opened up for us and we couldn't get enough of him. That's why he's back here today on this morning. So if you can, can you stand to your feet and can we welcome Minister Darius Twine. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give God a good praise in this house. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 You can have a seat real quick, real quick. I just want to give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I love him at 929 this morning. I love him. Anybody love him? Hallelujah. 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 I thank God for my mentor, the one and only Bishop-elect Marvin L. Winans. And I have to say this. Uh, Pastor Donnie McKirkland, I never had an opportunity to tell him publicly how much I appreciate him. Our paths have crossed, but we've never had an opportunity to actually speak. But when perfecting was on Greenfield, anybody remember those days? Back in the day, there was a 
conference and I had an opportunity to sing and I was real nervous. That's when I was 436 pounds, full and fabulous. <laughs> Don't hate on the bigness, it's all good. But I was singing a song and he kind of just walked through the side door and just stood there. He didn't know me, but I knew him. And his presence alone gave me peace. And I just want to say I thank God for you publicly. And for all those, and thank God for this holy convocation. This is such an honor to be back amongst the saints and to all God's people. Thank you, Bishop. I love you. Congratulations. 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 And I'm going to get one last little piece thing. Last time I was here, I was 320 pounds, and I took a picture back in the office with Bishop. And I said, uh-uh. I can't go out like this. So that was February or March. I'm now 285 pounds. I refuse to die. I refuse to allow a cheeseburger to put me in the grave, y'all. And I did it the right way. I just gave up sugar and all of that stuff, huh? And because I got to live, I got to go with you to Africa, man. I can't, I can't. I don't want to be in, I can't sit in them tight seats no more, so I got to. So that made me think about it. Where would I be if the Lord came back? Would I be in, my, in, in good shape? Would I just be, you know, out here? I got to get my body right. Come on, somebody say it's the temple. We got to get it right. So I got a little question, a little song I wrote, my new single. It just simply says, tell me where. Look, it down, look down the road and say, tell me where. Huh? You don't know it yet. I just need you to clap your hands. Come on. Come on, clap here. Listen. Tell me where. Tell me where. Tell me where, where. Tell me where, where. Tell me where. Tell me where. Tell me where, where. Tell me where, where. Hey, where will I be when the Lord comes for me? Will I be lying in my grave or standing with his rays? Will I be walking down the street looking for some lost soul to me? I wonder where will I be? I say, where, where will I be? Clap your hand right there. Where will I be? I wonder. Tell me where, say it. Tell me where. Tell me where, where. Tell me where, Come on. where. Tell me where. Tell me where. Tell me where. Tell me where. Hey. Say where will I be, 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 when the Lord, Lord comes for me? Will I be sitting at a table saying God is there? I wonder. I need you to, to clap your hand around it. I be right or wrong or praising God through a song. I'm wondering where will be anybody wondering where will be? Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm wondering. Where yeah. will be? Say, I wonder where will be. Come on, it doesn't matter because I'll be ready. It doesn't matter because I'll be ready. Say it on, it doesn't matter because come on, somebody, it doesn't matter. Anybody gonna be ready? It doesn't matter, cousin. Hey, it doesn't matter, cousin. Hey, be ready. 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 Yeah. Tell me where. Tell me where. Tell me where. Tell me where.
listen. Tell me where. Tell me where. Tell me where. Tell me where. I need y'all to ask the question. Come on. Tell me where, where. Tell me where, where. Tell me where. Tell me where. Clap your hands right there. Hit me one time. Come on, clap your hands right there. Come on. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Hey, it doesn't matter. I be Tell me where. 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 Come on and clap your hands if you're gonna be ready. If you're gonna be ready when the Lord comes back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ain't realize it was this early in the morning I had to sing that high. little song a few years back it simply says we must work while it is day for there's so much time but no time to play 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 won't you hear me when I say that we've got to work while it is still day for the harvest is ripe but the laborers are few there's so much work for all of us to do Don't you hear me when I say that we've got a word while it is day. Anybody got a job working for Jesus? I wonder, is anybody got a job working for Jesus in here? Come on and sing it with us. Oh, oh, say oh. Set
I said all of you I come on say This was just in my spirit, and I'm going to sit down. Jesus knows all about our struggles, yeah, yeah. and he will guide till the day is done, because oh, there's not a friend yeah. like the Lord. Big Mama told me, don't forget the hymns. No, not one. No, not one. I can remember my grandmama in the morning. She would transition and I hear her say, Father along will know all about Father in love will understand why she up my brother living living the sunshine understanding oh about Here she go. By and by, when the morning comes, anybody remember those songs? When all the saints, oh God, are gathering home, we will tell, tell the story of how, how we all. 
overcome and will under stand it better oh when the saints go marching in oh when the saints go marching in anybody want to read that number oh lord i want to be in that number your hands and say, singing glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name. Fresh. I'm singing glory to his name. where you are right where you are let's stand give a good good big god bless you to our presiding bishop bishop elect marvin l white come on and pray come on and praise him come on and praise him hallelujah Tempted and tried, we're off made to wonder why it must be thus all the day long when there are others living about us. Go unmolested, though they're in the wrong, but farther along. Know all about Father along will understand why. Look at your neighbor and say, Cheer up, my brother. Come on and live in the sunshine. We'll understand it. Oh, that you can't do that. Minister Twyman, you can't, you can't do that. You can't. Lord have mercy. There's a move going on that day.
I want to welcome everyone to our final day of Holy Convocation 2022. I want to thank all of you that braved and came in person. I want to personally thank, I have been really so blessed this week. From the first morning glory to uh, Apostle Herman Murray, to our classes, empowerment sessions, to the hour of powers, to the general session on yesterday. Oh my, 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 my. To Pastor Tommy Bates. <laughs> I want to thank, oh, you may be seated. I want to thank everyone for coming and supporting Holy Convocation 2022. I want to thank all of our PFI pastors and those of the congregations that have come and served with them. I want to thank all of the facilitators. I want to thank all of the persons that have made up. I want to thank every volunteer. You really are the key to the success of Holy Convocation. And I thank all of you for working, for serving. It is so necessary, and yet it draws us together as a fellowship. So if you didn't serve this week, shame on you, but you'll have opportunity next year to be a part of the situation want to thank our social media team for their engagement, the people that you don't see working behind the scenes. Last night I got some numbers, very impressed with our numbers. Thousands of people watch us, and as is common, they watch from beginning to the end. And so we praise God for the numbers that are up ticking, and uh, for those that have joined us, even in our a morning glory. We had over 400 people watching, uh, and in the at, in the middle of the afternoon on, a, and uh, we praise God for that. Um, to appreciate all of our uh, streaming efforts and the team that puts that together, I want to thank our light people. Let's give God praise for our. It's not like you just flip on a light. You have to, you know, there's, there's work that goes into it. And to our sound people and our audio department, and there, there's a group of people that are downstairs that you never see that are live mixing so that it sounds wonderful. Let's give them a hand, uh, Big Ed and his team. to our video uh, company with the G's on. Is, is, is the boss here? Is the boss here? Cheesecake, is the boss here? I don't know. He's not here at all. Oh, oh. Uh, it's uh, uh, Brother Daniel Jones and Good Boy Multimedia. That's their official name. And if you need their work, they do quality work, and they're nice people, so let's give God praise for them. I want to thank all of our department heads who, who lead and organize their teams. I want to thank Brother Melvin Acuff and his team for the finance department, Sister Floretta, Floretta uh, Watson and the uh, hospitality, the greeters, and they even told me to smile this morning because it was Saturday. I uh, want to thank Minister Daryl Farmer and the audio, Elder Roy Haynes, Elder Andre Healy, Sister Tracy Hill, catering department, you know they're my favorite, 
Brother Herman Jones and the Transportation Department, Sister Patrice Parker and the Dorcas Pastor's Aid, Sister Vina Parker, Brother James Scott, and uh, the security, Sister Randy Short. Those new outfits, I ain't seen them outfits, those new outfits. I said, oh, they got new outfits. They said, no, they're not new. All right. Uh, Sister Darlena Buf Buford and the usher department. And Brother David Buford and the music ministry. I want to thank Perfecting Church maintenance staff because when you go, when you go home, they go to work so that they can get it ready. Thank you so much, Sister Brandy and your, your team. We appreciate all of them. I want you to save the dates of May, May the 22nd through the 27th of next year for Holy Convocation 2023. And you may say, Pastor Winans, uh, that those are more dates. You're absolutely right. We're going back to convocation. Not a mini convocation. When Bishop Murray got through on Wednesday, I said, Lord, it's already Thursday. We will announce where. We have some prospective PFI places, but we want you to get those dates early. It's going to be the 22nd through the 27th. And come to stay the whole week. All right, I'll, I'll stop right there. Well, it's time for us to hear the Word of God. We have some pastors that are going to be joining PFI, and we are delighted to welcome them in. And before that happens, we're going to hear a word from our own Pastor Donnie A. McClurkin. Thank you, Jesus. Um, he, had, he served here for 12 years uh, as a part of Perfecting Church. He is officially member number nine, well, 10. It was an argument between him and Mother Bowman. <laughs> I want to honor my mother, Mother Winans. <laughs> Again, yes, and I honor Sister Winans today. It's time to hear the word of God. We know that God has anointed him. I remember telling him that God had a great work for him to do. And he was kind of bashful, pseudo humble. <laughs> but I had never met anyone so anointed. And when we first met him, uh, Ronald saw him at the door. He said, Peanut, here come that boy that's as anointed as you. <laughs> and that's all I saw. I didn't know his history and had no interest in it. I just saw the anointing on his life. Meshanda Bababas. Mekorobashai. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why we're here. We're not here to play games. I'm, we're not here to start a club. We're here to do what God has called us to do. We gather in holy convocation to receive a word from the Lord. My soul delights in him. So after we see the video presentation, please stand and receive the founder and pastor of Perfecting Faith Church, Pastor Donnie McClurkin. 
Pastor Donnie McClurkin served as an assistant to Bishop-elect Marvin L. Winans of Detroit's Perfecting Church for more than a decade. He was ordained and sent out by Bishop Winans in 2001 to establish Perfecting Faith Church in Freeport, New York. Perfecting Faith Church ministers to and cares for the whole person, spiritually, physically, and emotionally. The ministry sponsors health fairs and clothing drives and assists in providing shelter for the homeless, taking on the spirit of its leader. Evangelism and outreach to the lost and hurting are the lifeblood of the church's diverse ministries. Perfecting Faith Church has birthed two ministries, Perfecting the Heart Family Worship Center in Chester, South Carolina, and Perfecting Love Church in Winter Haven, Florida. Perfecting Faith Church's theme is Ministry Means People, and we endeavor to bring people into a real relationship with Jesus Christ. Asked to describe his greatest passion in life, Pastor McClurkin says, as much as I love music and singing, more now than ever before, I feel my greatest strengths and calling lie in pastoral ministry. It's my very existence and my greatest joy. Embodying his stance, the members of Perfecting Faith Church seek at all times to exemplify God's love, compassion, hope, and holiness to win the lost for Jesus Christ. Please stand to your feet and receive the uncompromising, anointed, and Holy Ghost-filled ministry of Pastor Donnie McClurkin. So, Father, I pray that you would grace me. Let your grace be upon us. Grace, the supernatural ability to do what we could not do in the natural. Grace now, I pray in your name. Let your glory be revealed. Let your name go forth and your word go forth in power. Let the people of God be blessed by you never impressed by me and give these people Lord God by the entrance of your word to see you more clearly to love you more dearly to follow you more nearly and now Lord let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O Lord my strength and my redeemer and I thank you now and every glad heart give God the greatest praise in the name of Jesus Come on, give God praise. Come on, give God praise. No, come on, give God praise. Let everything that hath breath. Let everything that hath breath. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Eulogize God. Speak well of him. Honor the Lord, the fruit of your lips. Haya Moshe. The fruit of your lips. The fruit of your lips. We thank the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I thank the Lord and I count it an honor every time that I stand in holy convocation. I count it an honor to be able to to down the pulpit and to be able to speak the word of life. I'm, I, and I, I hate getting to this part of tears, but I'm always reminded, I'm always reminded of the impartations and the, and the clandestine way that God brought all of this together. I am always reminded of how 
God orchestrated and directed steps to bring us to this point. I could do this without crying. But the reason why I always say that is because, not because I am such an easy mark or soft guy, but it is amazing what God does and how he does it. When you look back retrospectively and start to, start to acknowledge all the routes that God took you to get to where you are, when you start to understand that the Lord is such a grand and great architect of things, that God does things methodically, purposely, intentionally, and by his grace, he's brought us together. And I thank God for the leadership that he gave me. I thank God. I, and I, I, I will say this before we stand and give honor, before we stand, I will say this and please forgive me for being, for, for, for being a little bit unorthodox and, and, and outside of the parameters of the refinement needed for this assignment. I was a mess and God sent me to a man and a, and, and a people that gave me purpose. I'm trying to hold it back. But I was, I sat on the bed today. And my mind just started going back to when he brought me here and how he brought me here. And the things that happened by being here. You've got to sit long enough for God to be able to put in you what is necessary. You can't be in a rush and you can't have an agenda. And when I sat on the bed and I really started, I got up about 6.30 and I was praying and, I, and I, I sat on the bed and God just started taking me back in retrospect and showing me all the roads. And all I can do is say thank you because if it hadn't been for him directing me, I don't know what would have happened, but because of his guidance, because of his leading me, I landed in a place that took away my crutches. Y'all not hearing me. I landed in a place that made me stand straight and walk. I landed in a place that taught me what integrity was. I landed in a place that took excuses out of my mouth. I landed in a place that gave me character. I don't hear anybody here. And although I do not praise any human flesh, but I give glory to God for the leadership of this great man, my brother, but greater yet, my pastor, Pastor Marvin L. Winansey. You may be seated, and I'm going to try to get through this very quickly. My, my, my mother is in heaven. Nine years ago, my mother and my father went into heaven. And these are the thoughts that were going through my mind today. My mother and my father went into heaven. It left such a great void in my heart. But in 1988, I met a wonderful woman who has entreated me as her son from the very beginning. And I'm not saying this for platitudinous reasons. I'm saying this because this has kept me. This has kept me. She's rebuked me many times oh many times 
One time I even got a slap in the mouth and I thank God. Because she told me to hush and I did. And this woman, this great woman has treated me so and given me words of wisdom and I've been able to really, really heal from a loss of a mother because God gave me a spiritual mother and a great mother indeed. As my mother is in heaven right now and I can always thank God for her. But if I just look to my left right now, I will see a woman who has raised many children and I join the rank and files of those. Mother Dolores Minus. Bless your mother. I'm sorry for taking this long, but to the First Lady of Perfecting Fellowship International, to the First Lady of Perfecting Church, I honor and esteem highly the woman of God. Somebody give God praise for Dr. Deneen Wynans. And to the hardest working woman in ministry who runs so many things and runs them well and deserves many more accolades than she gets. A woman who's been keeping this holy convocation on track and still falling out on the floor and praising God. I, I, I want to give God praise for Sister Cindy Flowers. Now the word of God, very briefly, very quickly. Pastor Wynans, you wrote a song that said, Teach me, oh Lord. You didn't write that? Who wrote that? All right, take that back then. I have to take that. I take that back. Teach me, oh Lord, ways of thy statutes, and I shall keep them until the end. Lord, just give me understanding, and I will keep thy law. Yeah. With my whole heart Just teach me, oh Lord Teach me the ways of thy statutes And I shall keep them Until, until the end Lord, just give me a thank God for perfecting faith church that came and that's a part of all perfecting faith church stand please amen in the book of Psalm Psalm 119 from the very song that I sang, from the very song that David wrote. Psalm 119, verse 33 and 34 says, Teach me, O Lord, the ways of thy statutes, and I shall keep it until the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. 
By way of a thought today, I just want to send you home. I want to send you home with this final word. I want you to know that every pastor of every church in PFI has been given an assignment to teach. And every one of us that are part of every ministry that's represented here, the assignment for you is to learn and to do. So the message today is just going to be entitled, Teach Me and I Will Do. Everybody say, teach me and I will do. It is important that we understand that we have an obligation to learn. We have an obligation to set and to apply ourselves to teaching. We have an obligation not just to get into the emotion of what we do and not just seek the impartations that are given, but there's a learning aspect that goes along with this and not just to learn for the sake of learning but to learn for the responsibility to put what we've learned into action. There's a lot of emotion and sensationalism that goes along with this, but without the activation of what we've learned, then we have just done spiritual calisthenics and we have just done spiritual aerobics and not had productivity. Ah, uh, hear what I'm saying to you. And not having productivity. It's easy to become excited. It's easy when there's a certain cadence and there's a certain swirl of the organ and there's a certain swelling of the voice. It's easy to get caught up and enraptured in the moment, but the moment is not good enough. The moment is just to activate you, but it's supposed to inspire you to take what you've heard and put it into action. Somebody say, teach me, and I will do. In the book of Psalms, hallelujah, the book of Psalms, especially Psalm 119. Psalm 19 is interesting because it focuses on the word of God. Out of all of the Psalms, this Psalm focuses in on the word of God. The word of God, nearly every verse, nearly every verse in Psalm 19, the longest, the longest segment of the book of Psalms and the longest segment in the Bible, nearly every verse in Psalm 119 contains various synonyms and, used, and, and they're used to depict the word of God. Hallelujah. Words and phrases like the law of the Lord, statutes, precepts decrees, commands. It's throughout Psalm 119. Teach me thy statutes. Teach me thy statutes. Teach me thy statutes. And there is a hunger to learn for the sake of doing. I don't hear anybody here. For the sake of doing. And that, that makes this really important. And it values the instruction that comes along with God's assignments. Hallelujah. You know, and it's important to know the value of God's word being taught to us so that we can keep it and not simply know it. I will observe it with my whole heart. doesn't mean that I will just look on it and observe. It means that I will observe it, I will absorb it, and I will do it with my whole heart. When you understand the word of God and when you are taught systematically the word and the will of God, it is supposed to put a seed in you that activates you to doing. To doing. Hallelujah. And that means that in order to do, you've got to sit long enough to get the explicit instructions. Ah, uh, man, this is going to be harder than I thought. And it, it, it's not simply to know, but it is to do. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And all by getting, get understanding. Not an understanding, get understanding. Hallelujah. Wisdom, 
let's look at wisdom. Wisdom, the definition of wisdom is the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. Wisdom is having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. But you can have wisdom and still fail. You can have wisdom. You can have all of the knowledge and the experience and good judgment and not put it to use. Wisdom demands prudence. What is prudence? Prudence is the practical application of wisdom. So let me make that plain to you. Prudence is taking what you know, taking what you've learned, taking the experiences you've been through and putting them to practical everyday use in your life. There are many people that matriculate and learn. There are many people that gain knowledge. There are many people that absorb information and don't, and don't use it. We call them in our society educated fools. Degreed and certified and sitting in those higher schools of knowledge gaining certification, gaining degrees, and not utilizing them. And all the knowledge that they have is pent up in them, but there's no productivity because although they've learned, they haven't given themselves over to knowing how to use it. And let's tell the truth. There are many of us that sit in church for years. May I take my collar off for a minute? There are many people that sit in church for years and hear the word of God and have no productivity. There are many people that speak in tongues and carry on and fall out on the floor and do all the different things that go along with the scenario. But on Monday... I'm talking to us in here. On Monday, we, sit, we, we swiftly forget what we've heard. We forget the very things that we've sat and become students of. Hallelujah. And that, that, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews 2 and 1, well, therefore we ought to give the most earnest heed that means we need to do what we hear. We need to pay the most earnest heed to the things that we have heard, lest at any time we let them slip. Let me bring it down to you. You need to pay attention and apply everything that you've heard to your daily life, lest you fail to accomplish it. It is important that you sit as students that are gaining knowledge in order to do. Every one of us have an assigned, assigned task. Every one of us have a reason that we've been assigned to the churches we've been assigned to. Whether in this room or around the world watching right now. Every one of us have been led to the ministries that we've been led to for a divine purpose. Not just to be a member. Not just to sit on a department. Not just to get a position. But we've been led there to learn so that we can do. Somebody say, teach me and I will do it. We've been led by the Holy Ghost. We didn't choose our church. We didn't choose the ministry. God called us. That's the only reason why we can stay. It's because God called us. That's the only reason why we can endure. Because God called us. That's the only reason why we sat through all the storms. Because God we would have left a long time ago, but God called us. We would have listened to other voices pulling us away, but God called us. 
Look at your neighbor and say, God called me. I don't have a choice. I can't pick and choose where I go. I, I got to sit where God put me because there's a divine assignment. I can't throw in the towel. I can't walk away. I can't get my bat and ball and go home. Because God, I wish I had help here. God called us. And he set us in the right ministry. It wasn't a random placing. He set us in the right ministry that was going to feed us the right food and was going to groom us for the right assignment and that was going to cause us to follow so that we could become a leader. God orchestrated our steps and God put us under sound teaching. Sound teaching. It wasn't always easy, but it was necessary. I don't hear anybody here because the truth of the matter is uh, you got to get tired of failing knowing Can I, can I do that? You've got to get tired of failing knowing while you hear the word and you know the scriptures. You got to get tired of it not manifesting in your walk. You got to get tired of hearing prophecies that never come to pass. It's not because the prophecy was wrong. It's because you didn't apply what was said. It's not because the prophet was off. It's because you, 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 you didn't practically apply and prepare what the prophecy said. Because when the prophecy comes, you got to prepare. I don't hear anybody. When the prophecy comes, you got to prepare. When the preaching comes, you've got to prepare. <laughs> when the Lord speaks a word you've got to prepare for that word to come to pass in your life if you don't it'll just be seed that falls on fallow ground the seed's not bad the ground is I'm talking to people in this place and that are watching my live stream. I want you to know the seed is not bad. The seed is the word of God. It's just how you fail to prepare. You got to be tired of failing while you know it. Uh, you gotta, you, 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 and you're not failing because you don't know. You're failing because you don't do what you know. If I'm talking to you, I want you to internalize everything I'm saying. Because when you go home, you're going home changed. You're going home with a changed mentality. You're going home with a discomfort that's going to cause you to seek to do what you've heard and to use the impartations that were given you. Because you couldn't have been here. You couldn't have been here from Wednesday to today without receiving an impartation. But the question is, how many impartations have you received before? <laughs> this ain't your first time at the rodeo. This ain't your first time getting that power. This ain't your first time hearing this message. This ain't your first time seeing the glory of God revealed. This ain't your first time. But the question is, all the time before, what did you do? What did you do? Teach me. And I will do. Hallelujah. You didn't fail because you didn't know. You failed because you didn't do what you knew. Hallelujah. And you got to understand, the Bible says in the book of James, the fourth chapter, the 17th verse, he, he that knoweth to do good 
and doeth it not. And doeth it not. To him, to him that is sin. Y'all don't hear me. To know good and not do what you know is sin. Uh, this is not going like I thought. Of. Listen, let me explain to you. The word sin, hamartia, that means, that's, a, that's an archery term. Meaning that you shoot, but you didn't aim right. And you missed the mark. Hallelujah. So he said that he that knows to do good and doesn't do it, you miss the mark. You miss the mark. And not only that, and, and, and the root word, it's hamatano. Hamatano means to miss the mark and not receive the prize. So the reason a lot of us are not receiving the promise that was made to us is not because the promise expired. It's because we missed the mark. Hello, I'm talking to you. It's because we missed the mark. Not because of anything else, but we just didn't take heed and follow instruction. You must understand the call of your pastors. The call of your pastors is to give you spiritual instruction. To give you spiritual balance. Pastor is not just a name. See, a lot of us lost our names when we became pastors. Nobody calls me Donnie. They call me pastor. And to many people, it just became a name. And they saw it as a name and not my position. As a name, but not my position. And how do you know when those people have seen it only as a name without seeing the true level and the true magnitude of the position? It's when they praise God for what you say, but don't seek counsel. Praise God and dance in the service, but do things their own way. Praise God and speak in tongues, but won't sit down and hear the sound guidance and the sound judgment. Y'all don't hear me. Got a pastor and they don't seek counsel to get married. They go and get married on their own. And by the time they finish, they're sitting back in the council room with a failed marriage because you did not. You knew to do right, but you chose to do it your way. And by your own doing, you fail. I'm talking to people in this room that ain't got a mask on. Take that mask off. And if you miss the mark, you just say, help me, Lord, teach me. And I will do it. I'm not going home with just a good feeling. I'm going home with a different calibration. You just realigned me. I got to get some productivity behind. Who am I talking to? Put a praise on it right now. But the word, give me 10 more minutes. But the word, teach. The Hebrew word for teach is yara. And that's another archery term. That is to point the arrow and to aim. The pointing of the finger and instructing. The teacher points the arrow, teaches you how to aim that shot. Teaching you, I don't hear anybody here. That, 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 that pastor teaches you how to pull back and how to, how to get that, that, that target in your crosshair. To make sure that you hit it dead center. So that you hit it bullseye. And if you pay attention, you'll see success. I don't hear anybody here. If you give attendance to the word of God, to do it, you will have great success. I don't hear anybody here. Great, I'm telling you from my own experience, all the teaching I got wasn't always pleasant, but it was always purposeful. Y'all are too dead for me. All the teaching I got wasn't always pleasant, but by paying attention, it brought about my purpose. 
And I can look back in hindsight and say it was good that God gave me great teachers. It was good that God sat me down. It was good that God corrected me. It was good that God rebuked me. It was good that I heard the chastening from the pastor. It was good that I sat myself under the authority, submitted myself. It was good. I'm grown. I don't have to listen to nobody. Oh, what a foolish statement. For in the multitude of counselors, for in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. That means that if I sit with some good counsel, I will be safeguarded from failure. Let Let me wrap this up. You're not going home to be the same. After two years of a pandemic, there should be a change in you. After two years of being sheltered in place and being marginalized and being masked and and having regulations, there should be a hunger. A, A hunger in you to get more in this season than you ever have before. You, the, 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 the breakdown of the pandemic should have showed you and taught you how to value what you had before. I don't hear anybody. Showed you to value the gathering of the saints together. Should have showed you to value the coming into the house in person. Should show you to value the need for us to be together. The ecclesia, the call. Now, it should have told you to value. In the two years of this pandemic, shut us down in New York. Shut us down. We went from being able to have a thousand in our service to a week later, 500. To the next week, the governor said 250. To the next week, they said 100. To the next week, they said 50. To the next week, they said nobody. And me sitting in there with one guy named Bobby and an iPhone. And doing my services with just two people in a room. Thanking God for for the shift. The shift, what do you mean? The shift that, that the digital platform became great. The church became the digital platform and you could reach more people around the world. Mm. And I'm sitting there with just two people in a room reaching many different continents and different countries and teaching through an iPhone. Y'all not hearing? Teaching through an iPhone. Mm. And then putting on gloves and putting on double masks and in the middle of, uh, of of the height of the pandemic, giving out food in the community. Before the pandemic, we gave out 30 to 50 bags of food to family. During the 2020 year, we gave 193 tons, not pounds, tons of food to over 100,000 families. Because everything that we've learned, we had to do. There comes a time where you can no longer just be a member sitting on a seat. But all of the anointings and all of the messages and all of the impartations have got to bear fruit. Have got to bear fruit. You cannot be a part of the true church of Christ any longer just sitting there and bearing no fruit. (laughs) Y'all don't hear me. Every tree that bears no fruit is supposed to be cut down. Y'all don't hear what I'm telling you. And you cannot afford to, after all this time, being cut down. You've been in the church all these years. To be cut down because you are non-productive, that's unheard of. What you got to do is shake yourself. Get back into the real truth of who you are and who you've been called to be. Let the roots that you have done, that, 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 that the roots that have gone down into the ground, let it pull and cause life to come into you again. And never be satisfied 
never be satisfied with just marginal living. There's a purpose for you. Somebody raise your hands as I close and say, teach me and I will do. Wisdom is not enough. Wisdom is not enough. Wisdom is not enough. Just having wisdom is not enough. Using wisdom is the goal. Using the wisdom that you have is the goal. And the goal of wisdom is to develop prudence. Hallelujah. You, you don't gain knowledge just for knowledge's sake. You're not going through the scriptures just to say I memorize verses. Hallelujah. But that, 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 you, you, you're not just learning for knowledge's sake. Hallelujah. You are taught not just to learn, but to do. I'm going to come to a close here. Jesus taught his disciples. He taught them with expectation. He taught them with expectation for them to do what he taught. Y'all don't hear me. They walked with him while he taught the Beatitudes. They sat at his feet while he gave instructions. They walked with him and saw the miracles that he did. And he sent them out two by two to do what they saw him do. Y'all don't hear me. They had to, they had to produce. Oh Lord, oh, they had to. Produce. They saw some serious situations that gave them an opportunity to learn and to do. Twelve disciples on a stormy lake in the middle of a tornado with lightning flashing and thunder rolling, winds blowing and rain falling, waves crashing and boat reeling. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. They're sitting there in ebon darkness. There is no, there's no moon. There's, there's no lantern. There's no light. But all they have is the terror of their situation. But they've been in this situation before. They've been in that situation with Jesus in the bottom of the boat. Up to the boat. And they went down and said, Master, don't you care that we're about to perish? Jesus said, oh, you have little faith. How long I got to deal with y'all? He gets up and walks and holds on to the boat. As it's lurching and gets into the soaking rain with the wind blowing. Hallelujah. And the thunder rolling. And the lightning flashing. And the waves crashing. And he gets to the front of the boat. And in frustration with all the chaos, he says, peace. Peace. Be still. And the winds bowed. And the thunder rolled back. The lightning stopped. The waves settled. Tatala Moshanda. Y'all not hearing me. The rain ceased. The moon shined. And he walked back down into the hull of the boat. And he left 12 disciples scratching their head. What manner of man is this? That even the winds and the waves obey his command. You're clapping over the story but missing the true lesson. He gave that experience to them for them to do it themselves. I don't hear nobody. He wanted them to experience it so that when the next time came, they'd know what to do. You've been experiencing things so that when the next roll comes, you'll know what to do. 
So the next time they get in a boat, Sheba, Jesus feeds 5,000 men, not including women and children. And then he tells them, go on over to the other side. I'll meet you there. Why? Because I want you to utilize what I put in you. Y'all don't hear me. Your tongue did the deal, Hosa. Your pastor's there to lay hands on you when you're going through your situations. But that's just to teach you that when you go through again and you can't call your pastor, you got to be able to lay hands on yourself with the same anointing that comes from your leader. I don't hear anybody in this room. And they get in the boat. Jesus, he's doing things intentionally. He sends them off and sends the people away, but he doesn't follow them. He goes up into the Jordanian mountains, sits there and waits to the fourth watch of the night. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Between six, 3 and 6 a.m. And they are fighting with the waves. He sits in the mountain seeing the storm coming. He sent them on purpose. Knowing that there was a storm coming. Jesus will send you into a situation. Just so you can prove that you can do what you learn. Wow! Wow! It's in the boat. And they go out and they find themselves running head on into a storm while Jesus sits in a mountain and watches. The Bible said he watched them struggling in their rowing and he did not move. Are they going to use what I gave them? And they struggled and they did not use what he taught them how to do. So he himself had to get up and he had to walk down the mountain, had to wrap his toga around him and go into the elements, go into the elements, the same rain that beat upon them soaked him, the same wind that blew upon them blew his toga. The same lightning, he saw it. The same thunder, he heard it. The same wind he had to walk against. And as he walks down off the mountain, he walks onto the shore. And he walks from the shore, pushing against the wind. And he walks onto the crest of the water. But instead of his foot being immersed in the water, he walks on the water like it's hard ground. And he walks out into the deep, walking on top of crashing waves. The waves didn't settle and the wind didn't stop blowing and he walked on the crest of the wave. When the wave came down, he came down with it, but he never went under and he never lost his balance. Look at God. He's a wonder all by himself. He's walking in the ebon darkness. There's no lantern. There's no light. There's no illumination. There's nothing to see. So he walks toward the boat that cell shows up every time the lightning flashes. The only light they have is the light from the lightning. Oh God. And as he walks, as he walks, Disciples are toiling, bailing out water, trying to keep the boat from going under simply because they wouldn't use what they learned. I, I submit to you, you may be going through stuff unnecessarily simply because you ain't using what you were taught. God's got to get involved because you ain't using what you were taught. I'm almost finished. The lightning flashes. One disciple sees the image. 
They think it's a ghost. They think it's death. They, they're in terror. Jesus stops before he gets to the boat, bouncing on the waves, wind blowing him, spring soaking him, cups his hands over his mouth with no ampli amplification, hollers across the noise of the wind, hollers across the peal of the thunder, hollers across the crashing of the waves. Be not afraid! Oh, be not afraid! Be not afraid! It's just me. Twelve disciples, and only one he understands. Peter, oh Peter, holding on to a lurching boat, wiping the rain out of his face, wind blowing against him, in spite of the thunder and the lightning. Master! That word master means teacher. That word master means teacher. Oh, master! If it's really you, oh, bid me to come to you. And, and the teacher gets excited because the student is about to do I don't hear do I have anybody that's about to do do I have anybody here that's about to do the teacher gets excited because he sees faith that's about to bring about productivity he sees something about to happen because somebody got the message. Oh! If it really be you, bid me to come. And Jesus just speaks one word. You can't walk without that word. You can't do the miracle without that one word. Jesus doesn't take another step forward. Stands right there on the bouncing waves and says, come! And, and, and as soon as Peter heard the word, you got to hear the word of your teacher. You got to hear the word as soon as Peter heard the word of his teacher, he leaves the rest of the 11. He forgets he's a part of a crowd. <laughs> Sometimes you got to forget those that are non-productive. Sometimes you got to leave those that ain't doing nothing. Who am I talking to? Sometimes the people you're associated with are holding you back from your miracle. Say it! I gotta end here. Peter leaps over the side of the boat, excited over one word the master told me to come. Oh, Peter! Ain't nothing but water underneath. But the master told me to come. Oh, Peter! You can't stand on H2O. And no, but my teacher told me So you gotta break ranks. You gotta let people watch your faith. 
You put on an emotion, the hook up. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, watch my thing. You gotta, oh, no, 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 no. you gotta let people watch your thing. You don't have time to explain. You gotta follow the instructions. jumps out the boat and to his amazement he can do what the master taught him how to do standing on the water as it swells standing on the waves as they crest I gotta stop I don't have the time to tell you about the teacher Elijah teaching his mentee Elisha. Elisha did not come there just to be a part of a group. He came there to learn. I didn't come here just to be a part of a group. I came here for that impartation that's going to cause me to do when I first came here, you know, my family told me, you're just following a man. You're just trying to follow a man. My own family. Because they didn't understand the assignment. They didn't understand the assignment. And family backed up. They said, going out there, you're a fool. Following a man, trying to be a part of his family. No, 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 it had nothing to do. There was a divine assignment. Excuse me. There was a divine assignment. You were no longer peanut. You became teacher. You became instructor. And I had to throw away my primary conception of you my primary perception of you had to throw it away because now I got to see you as the covering and as the man with the instruction I gotta oh I gotta walk with you I gotta walk with you like Elisha did and when other people the sons of the prophet said why are you following him don't you know what's going to happen to your master? I had to be like Elisha and say, shut your mouth. Hold your peace. Because I got to stick with him as he goes from Bethel to Jericho. As he goes from Jericho to Gilgal. As he goes from Gilgal to Adon. I don't hear anybody here. To the Jordan. I got to follow him. And I got to listen. And I got to pay attention. I'm talking to you with your pastors. You got to pay attention. He's not saying much, but you got to catch it in the spirit. You don't hear about Elijah's talking much to Elisha. But Elijah said, stay here while I go over to, Jer to Jericho. Elisha said, as God lives and as your soul lives, I'm not leaving you. I tell you in front of all these people, as God lives and as your soul lives, I'm not leaving you. Let others go. They weren't supposed to be here. But I'm being taught so that I can do. I never, I never, I never handled a multi-million dollar ministry before. I learned it here. Put the principles in place there and have the productivity to show for it. Somebody say, teach me and I will do it. We gotta finish this. We gotta finish this. Whew. 
We are called to these ministries to learn and to do. We are called to these ministries for the leader to serve you and to invest in you the word, the will, the way of God for you to take that and to grow thereby. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And to grow thereby. Jesus said, he said, don't be like those that hear the word and don't do it and waste all of your energies on fruitless ventures because you invested your strength in something that you weren't taught how to handle. My brothers and sisters, as you go back to your churches, submit yourself. Go through whatever you've got to go through. Listen, learning is not always an a, a easy road. It's not always a, a rose petal covered road. Some lessons that you teach that break you. Some lessons that you learn that break you. There's some lessons that you learn that hurt you. Because that lesson has got to break a bone that's set wrong. Sometimes you come with bones that have healed wrong. And you can use your arm, but it's off because the bone healed wrong. And so you've got to go to somebody who can re-break it and set it And let me tell you, you talk about church hurt, church hurt, church hurt. That's just the re-breaking of a bone that's set wrong. The pastor hurt me. He had to so that you could be straight. You, there's got to be pain in order to have progress. Reset the bone. Let it heal so you can use the full dexterity and productivity, the full range of who God called you to be. To everyone that knows that you have not been utilizing what you've learned and this message has convicted you, I want you to come down to the floor right now. Listen, this takes, this takes humility. Pride will keep you in your seat. Pride will keep you in your seat. I'm, I'm okay. No, you're not. Some of us are just not okay. We have been in this for a long time, and we have seen very little productivity. We haven't done what we've been taught. If that is you, and, you, and you're tired of wasting time, come down right now. And I'm not going to tarry long trying to get you to come. It's got to be something in your spirit. Come, come. Don't, don't, don't hesitate. Come, come. Come, come. 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 That's right. And the prophetic word that's supposed to flow through you constantly. And the prophetic word, I see it over your head. The prophetic word, the prophetic prayer, and the prophetic word that you hold back because you're afraid of what the people will think or say. Do what God gave you to do. Speak what God gave you to speak. Be who God's called you to be without apology because that anointing is on your shoulders. I can just about see it and it's heavy. And it causes you to cry tears because you know that you should have said and moments pass by, but no more, no more. You will open your mouth and you will do what you've learned. Great woman. It is, 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 it is. Raise those hands. Raise those hands. Raise those hands. It is a new day. It is a new day. And you will produce. You will hear the voice of your pastors. You will hear the instructions given by your leaders and you will produce. 
there will be no more fruitlessness. What are your hands for? Teach me and I will do it. What is my life for? Teach me and I will do it. What is the call on my life for? Teach me. Pastor, teach me. And I will do it. What is all that I've been through for? Teach me. And I will do it. Where is the power? Teach me. I will use it. I am a surrendered vessel. I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do, I'll do what you say do. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord, to show someone the way and enable me to say I'm going to do it. Lord, my storage is empty and I See, a lot of you are singing the song because we automatically go into the familiar. But leave the familiar right now. It's not the singing of the song, it's the doing of the song. Take away, take away, take away the disappointment. 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 Oh. oh! Take away the disappointment. Raise those hands. It is just that simple. It is just this simple. Our surrender today. Our surrender today puts us in the place. Puts us in the place of being reset our hands lifted up put us in the place of being reset hallelujah and we will learn we will shoot the arrow straight we will hit the mark we will bear fruit we will go to our several homes and our several churches roll up our sleeves hear the word of God sit under sound counsel be taught and produce Father unleash it upon everyone now Father as you've given this word unleash it upon every lifted hand now we will not leave here the same we will not waste these impartations from this week <laughs> we will build upon what we have received here power anointing we will build upon this and we will learn from our leaders how to accomplish our assignments. We will submit ourselves in your mighty name, Jesus. Raise those hands and raise those hearts. We are surrendered vessels. Use us in the gifts of the Spirit as we sit and we learn at the feet of leader. Use us in the gifts of the Spirit in prayer, in ministry, in prophecy, in evangelism, in missions. Use us, Lord God, in the de la Bohoya and Danamasa, to your glory, O oh God, in our song, our music, in our craft, our gift. Hallelujah, in our pastorate, in the name of Jesus. Use us. Use us. We receive it in your name. Now give God a great praise. Give him a great praise. You know, come, hear the instruction. Give God a great praise. You
breakthrough. I hear a breakthrough. Don't hold it back. Don't hold it back. Oh, Jesus. Don't hold it back. I see some of you. Amen. As you go back to your seat, I want you to go back with a renewed mind. I want you to go back with a renewed purpose. And I want you to show up at your church. Show up in your ministry. Sit in your Bible studies and sit in. Submit yourself to the leaders, to the pastor and the elders of the church, to your department leaders. As you go back to your seat, I want everybody that has breath in this room to clap your hands and to shout to God. Everyone, through your mask, through your mask. As, as Pastor Brown comes, I'm going to make an appeal for the offering and very quickly as Pastor prepares to mantle the new ministries. Hear me, hear me. This is the point where we are going to learn how to, I'm going to teach you how to follow the instruction that will cause you to benefit. We're going to worship God in our giving. Hear me, this is the ministry that caused me to learn how to sow, and that sowing that caused me to become enriched to the degree that I'm too ashamed to say. Because God can bless you till you become embarrassed. God can bless you till you blush. God has blessed me to the point of blushing. And I'm, I'm going to utilize that same methodology as we give. Now understand, giving is always sacrificial. Giving is what? Watching me by live stream, giving is always sacrificial. Giving is what? And it means that there is a sacrifice that all of us must make. And I want us to rise to, this is our last day. And I'm going to give a gift of $1,000. Hallelujah. And, 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 and if, there are, if there are churches that will join me, if there are churches that will join me, if there are churches that will say, I'm our church is going to sow $1,000. Our church is going to sow $1,000. Our ministry, or even individuals that will sow $1,000. I want you to stand right now if you're saying that, no, we will sacrifice, and this budget will be met in totality. If that is you, and you are going to sacrificially sow $1,000 from your ministry or your personal life, stand to your feet right now and join me in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. If there's anyone else, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. And that's right. That's right. If you can't do it by yourself, let your ministry be blessed by you sowing through your ministry in the name of Jesus. Everyone that's going to sow that sacrificial gift of $1,000, make your way to the middle aisle right now. It's not given to be seen, but it's always good to be seen giving in the name of Jesus. Come, God bless you. God bless you, young man. Bless your heart. God bless you, my sister. Bless your heart. Come on, that's right. God bless you, my sister. Somebody needs to praise God. God bless you, my sister. Amen. 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 Come to the middle aisle. Just come straight to the middle aisle. Amen. Hallelujah. This takes faith. This is not easy. This is faith, knowing that God will surely bless you for the blessing that you give. God bless you, Sister Janice. God bless you. God will bless you for your sacrifice. Oh, y'all not hear me. If I could tell you my blessings. I can't tell you without getting in trouble. God will bless your sacrifice. 
I follow the leading of my pastor as well. God will bless your sacrifice. Amen. Amen. There are a couple more of you that I'm going to wait very, very briefly. There are some of you that will sow that gift online. Do so. Do so. If you will sow that $1,000 gift online, do so. And if you don't have it to sow, don't get angry. Don't get mad. They're always asking for money. Oh, no, money answers all things. But the bottom line is if you don't have it, don't get angry. Bless God for those that are coming that have it. Amen. 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 Dude, that's right. That's right. There are eight of us, nine of us, ten of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in a few minutes, the whole budget is going to be met. There's 11. Hallelujah. Yes, God. There's 12. Hallelujah. In a, just a few more numbers and we will have met the budget. <laughs> Hallelujah. That, that, that's another one, 13. That, that's all, Mushanda. Glory to God. Glory to God. Could, so, so, could somebody give me an official count of these people that are here, not even counting those that are doing it online? Somebody praise God for those that are sowing $1,000 online. I said somebody praise God for them. Amen. Amen. He's a wonderful, oh, there's another one. That's sacrificial, that's sacrificial. That's sacrificial. And why aren't you, why isn't everybody excited over these faith walkers? There's another one, thank God, thank, that, that's, there's another one. That's 16, oh man, I'm gonna mache. Yes, God, yes, God, there's another one, that's 17. Yes, Lord. Why isn't anybody screaming in excitement? Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is sacrificial. This is sacrificial. Now, to all, all those that say, okay, I, I, I don't have a thousand, I'm going to give 500, I'm going to give 200, I'm going to give 100, stand up right where you are. Not 500, 200, 100, doesn't matter, stand up where you are. Hallelujah. Stand up where you are. Glory to God. Glory to God. That, that's, that, that's how we do this. I am so excited about this, it is not funny. This is how we do it. Amen. Amen. Can I do this, Bishop? Can I ask everybody that's given five, two, and one to come stand on this line? Come, jump on that line, jump on that line. The anointing's gonna be on this line. Come on, come out of the pulpit, no matter where you are. If you're giving 500, 200, 100 dollars, come stand on this line. And somebody, if you don't have that to give, give God praise for those that do. You online, you can do the same thing. You do the same thing. Hallelujah. Thank you, singers. Thank you, musicians. Thank you. Thank you, ushers. Thank you. Thank you, interpreters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, pastors. Thank you. Come shamelessly. Come proud that you're able to sell. Hallelujah. Because this ministry is going around the entire globe right now. We are dealing with a global ministry. Everyone standing with the best thing that you have. With the best gift. Now to those of you that are standing with your best gift, do not feel slighted or do not feel any specific kind of way because you could not do this. For there was a time I could not do this. And by sacrificing what I did have, I can, t I can tell you now by sacrificing what I did have, it got me to the point where I can do this. Don't ever be ashamed of your gift. Just make sure it is your best. Don't crumple it up like you're afraid or ashamed. Be proud of what God has allowed you to sow. No matter who you are, no matter where you are. Remember, it was the widow's might that Jesus said for us to always remember. 
So give the best that you have. Hold that up before the Lord. Hold it up before the Lord. Father, we sacrifice this in honor of this holy convocation. We thank you for allowing us to gather in-house and online. Praise you for the impartations, the manifestations. Thank you, Lord God, for the obligations that have been given to us to take home with us. Thank you, Lord God, for credible ministries, credible ministers and pastors. Now, Lord God, bless the fruit that we are about to sow into the kingdom soil, this seed that we're about to sow into the kingdom soil that will bring forth a harvest and the harvest that will bring forth fruit that will remain. And we will sow again, Lord God, in a greater quantity as you've caused us to grow and increase. Now, Lord God, we do so cheerfully for you love a cheerful giver. To God be the glory. Everyone say, not as a debt I owe. Come on, in-house, online, say, not as a debt I owe. But this is a seed I sow. From all over the building, come and give, bring your gift. Musicians, help us out here. Hit us now. From right from where you are, come. Give not grudgingly, nor a necessity. When you give, fall on the land, when you give, all on the not grudgingly, nor a necessity. Oh Lord, when you give, say it again. When you give, oh, come out of your seats. No. Those of you in your seats. Just come to the middle aisle and go back around. When you give up, no necessity, no Lord God. Say it again, say it again. When you give, 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 when you Somebody, let's give Pastor Donnie a big hand clap of praise. Thank God for the word on today. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I know we can, we can do better than that. Hallelujah. We are going to move into the mantle service at this time.
So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he with the 12. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. The mantling ceremony is particular to Perfecting Fellowship International. It was birthed in the heart of our founder and our bishop-elect, Marvin L. Winans, to engage in a ministry covenant with all PFI pastors. This covenant will be reflected in the casting of the ceremonial mantle, just as in the case of Elijah and Elisha, the token of the mantle has specific purposes. The call, the mantle that Elijah wore was not so spectacular in its appearance, but it carried a spiritual significance because of who he was and whose he was. His mantle became the recognized statement of the office of the prophet. It also had spiritual significance in that it was used as a vessel of miracles in the prophet's hand. All who saw him knew that they were in the presence of a man of God. It was the signal of selection that when he cast his mantle, it was the same mantle that would part the river Jordan. But not be long after this moment that Elisha left his worldly occupation to become the minister to the prophet. The mantle will signal the calling of the perfecting Fellowship International pastor to a higher work. It is necessary that things of covenant recognition have meaning. In the story that unfolds of the relationship between the prophet and his minister, there are several occasions when they are in the company of the sons of the prophets. This biblical truth clearly validates that all ministers are not going to have the same calling or same relationship with the prophet. In fact, they knew it because when they spoke to Elijah, uh, of Elijah to Elisha, they said, thy master, Elijah. Jesus would later validate this understanding in his teachings when he declared, many are called, but few are chosen. The mantle reflects a certification that you are chosen. This act by Elijah calls Elisha to make a life commitment to serving the prophet of God. First Kings 19, 21, Scripture has these words concerning Elisha. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. It was Elisha who changed his career objectives and became the minister. Elisha went after Elijah. He followed him and ministered unto him. Three times Elijah would restate his commitment to covenant and the strength and fidelity to his promise and say, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. This mantling ceremony reflects a covenant commitment between our leader and his ministers. We serve God and we minister to our prophet, our bishop, our leader. At this time, bishop-elect, the presbytery, ecclesiastical elders, can you come forward?
to our PFI candidate pastors. I'm going to call you in the order that I'm going to ask you to stand. And as you come, I'm going to ask that you stand and line up here. Beginning with Pastor Chauncey Brown, Pastor Majestic Life Church, Orlando, South Atlantic Region. Pastor Andre Davis and Lady Davis, Past Path Ministries, Memphis, Tennessee. Pastor Reginald Taylor and Lady Taylor, New Hope in Jesus Baptist Church, Chicago, the Southern Region. Pastor Maurice Yancey and Lady Yancey, Place of Redemption Church, Virginia Beach, South Atlantic Region. This day will mark the public commitment between the prophet and his ministers. Perfecting Fellowship International is a body of believers in covenant with God, our faith, and with each other. The token of mantling signifies my commitment to you as your leader, priest, and prophet. And your acceptance of the token will indicate your commitment to the minister unto God through service and fellowship with me and this people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a mighty God. Father, we honor you. We thank you that without coercement, without any carrots being in place, but simply because they hear your voice and the anointing, say this is what they want to serve in. I am humbled at the fact that these wonderful men and women of God would come. So I pray that your grace be upon what is done today. In Jesus' name, I need somebody to give God praise right now. Right? This token, this chain, it's precious. And it, sig it signifies the process of purification necessary to bring it from its original state to its present value. It is continuous, having no beginning or ending, teaching of the enduring relationship of Christ to his bride, the church, and unwavering fidelity to the covenant which we are reflecting as leaders before his people. Inscribed on this chain are the letters PFI, designating its wear as a follower in the company of pastors of Perfecting Fellowship International, called, certified, 
and in covenant with the bishop and the Lord's church. Pastor Chauncey, would you stand here? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, shut up. Ba, 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 ba. This anointing. Yes, God. This anointing. Oh, shut up. Ba, 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 ba. Let them understand. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. I'm hearing the word launching this this day. Launching a new experience. I want you to wear your coat in the anointing. You didn't call yourself to this. God called you. But what I see, and I don't want you to be apologetic for where God is launching you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, Lord, your grace and this, oh, Baba, see, and this anointing be upon this man to lead the congregation of majestic life in, as their pastor. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Come on and give God praise. Come on and give God praise. Come on and give God praise for Pastor. He's part of the Southern Atlantic region. It's Pastor Davis. Look like PFI is getting taller. Shanti. Uta da da ba 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 ba. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of fear. I can hear. Oh, ba ba si a da ba 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 sha. And hear the Holy Ghost saying, "Don't worry about the voices around you." Because they don't know what I've given you to do. Stand. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on church and give God praise. Come on and give him praise. Let the anointing accept them into this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, ba 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 sa. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. 
tão bonito. figure it out. You just got to trust what God is doing. Thank you, Lord. Do it in her. In Jesus' name. Come on, church. I need somebody to get Really, I need you to praise God. region here PFI the Midwest region now look whenever you go to Chicago you got a church to go to if you're not going to Harvey Illinois <laughs> father I thank you I praise you for the the humility bravery of this man to hear your voice and so shut up and to say this is what I want at a time see I thank you the anointing of God I hear pastor I want you to look for the ministering gifts to flow in your church no see Watch Omanda Babosha. I need a church that knows how to praise. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first, I need somebody. I got a Oh, Open your mouth and say, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he cares for me. Ay, 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 ay.
Pastor and First Lady Yancey. My yada ba ba ba. They're in the South Atlantic region, Virginia Beach, Virginia. I'm saying it. They go to Tidewater for for vacation. You got a church to go to. Hallelujah. The anointing of God is on his life. His testimony is quite incredible. What God has done for him. Hallelujah. You can walk away from God, but God won't walk away from you. You can find yourself in prison with all like, like what, what the pastor preached. This is a great message we heard today. Hallelujah. Anointed, but just don't want to do. I'll let him tell his testimony. But the Holy Ghost is here right now. you to understand I sense in the spirit that God doesn't want you to rely on your singing gift to build the church but on the oh, but on the anointing of the word that he oh and I yonder la ba 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 I don't want you to be afraid of growth or try to manage the growth process, but let God bring in all that he's going to bring in and you be there to teach. 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 Pick him up. Pick him up. The empowerment. The empowerment. Of the word, the anointing of God. Ta ba ba ba, shanto ba 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 ba. Aye, maya da 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 mo shata ba. Imparted, imparted, imparted. Oh, 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 down on the inside. Come on and give God praise, everybody. Oh God, He gonna do it. I want you to watch. Ba 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 ba. The anointing of God. Aye, 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 there's going to be a supernatural move. Folk are going to show up you've never seen before. But you just teach and preach the word. Don't worry about Oh, ba 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 They will come because he's going to send them. You just drop the net. Lord. I need somebody to give God praise there. Come on and give God praise. Come on and give God praise. I want us to welcome. Oh, we got a man. Oh, my yada ba ba ba. Oh, yeah, it's getting ready to happen, sir. I promise you, I feel the anointing. Come on, come on, give God praise. Would you please give a wonderful PFI welcome to Pastor Chauncey Brown, to Pastor Davis, Lady Davis, to Pastor Taylor, Lady Taylor, and to Pastor Yancey and Lady Yancey. Come on and give God praise. Come on and give God praise. That's the class of 2022. Y'all not happy enough. In 
now this is the first time this has ever happened, but we praise God. I'm going to ask Sister Reva Watkins and her husband, uh, Brother Watkins, to come. I really have a, a lot of respect for Pastor Reva. I mean, uber respect for Pastor Reba. I can say as a, a founding pastor that it's, it's different when you step out and start a work. Uh, and under the circumstances that she started it under. Listen, it's no way I would have done it, but God. And the proof is what God did with her and through her. Uh, Pastor, Pastor Lee taught about Working through your pain. What was the title? Ministering during tough times. Well, she ministered to some real tough times. But God, I, I'm, I'm going to let you go. I, I got my eye on the clock. God is faithful. So much I could say. And uh, she started Majestic Life, and uh, the church grew and has grown. I mean, when we went to do the vetting, we, we told them, look, we have convocation next year at this church right now and don't have to. That's how large it is. And it's a, just a wonderful facility. Um, but then, her humility, stand past the Chauncey Brown, to have him become, yeah, Davis is so tall, it's like you stand and don't need. <laughs> Wave your hand, Pastor Brown, there, there we go. To have Pastor Brown come and take over as the pastor of the church that she founded is a lot of humility. <laughs> and trusting in what God has given her. And she steps back as the apostolic voice to majestic life. And since she has already put that into place, then she married Brother Watkins. A lot of humility, a lot of humility has to take place because the enemy would come and try to create division, try to create barriers. But in the work of the Lord, Jesus, Paul wrote to the church at Corinth and said, no flesh can glory in his presence. I thought I had a Bible, church. No flesh can glory in his presence. So we want them to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. About seven years ago, it's probably longer than that, I started, we took the board on retreat, and I started my exit plan. I ain't going nowhere. Don't get nervous. Y'all was quiet as a church mouse on Wednesday. I got, I got a lot of work to do. But I never want to leave the church without a plan. Are, are you with me? And so to understand the inner mechanisms of the church, 
Wave your hand, Brandy. That's, that's Brandy, uh, get on the camera. That's Brandy Snipes. She grew up at this church. And she is now the, what is she? Managing Director of Operations and Staff. So she runs the church. I mean, she was around 12 years old when she came. She's a little older than that, and she's getting married in a little while this year, later on this year. I said that because every now and then I'll go by our office or see her in the lunchroom, and I'll say, you didn't have any idea this all happened to run this church. And she said, I had no idea. The inner mechanisms of the church are very, very important. And people will come and view and judge predicated upon what they think. They have no idea and neither do they have access to understand. Why didn't you tell me? Because I ain't supposed to tell you. But to stand and to see the The growth of the work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he's going to follow her. You got me? Now, she'll have to give him room to make mistakes. But they'll handle that. Okay? And as the church begins to grow, her voice becomes more needed. Uh, Y'all missed that. It becomes more needed. And so we pray for Brother Watkins that he would safeguard her heart. Not get in front of it. Because you, you got to understand. I don't want to teach. I got two minutes. I'm trying to get you out of here. But we, we get mixed up with the things of God. Jesus told Nick that that which is born of the flesh is, and that which is born of the spirit is, and we confuse the two. We try to run the church like we run our own business or like the government runs. The government is democratic, but it is not theocratic. You can't tell God how to run his church. There was a man by the name of Barak that was a captain in the host of God's army. But he says, I'm going nowhere without Deborah. Because the anointing is on her. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. And so when we come out of the flesh and come out of our feelings, it's easier to do what God has anointed us to do. And so, me shandolobosia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, the, the understanding of this union is that God called you. We went to breakfast the other day and he said, I know I'm her answer. I said, well, go ahead then. And be her answer. But we cannot convolute what God is doing. In other words, as you stand in the security of knowing that God has called you to be her answer, you have to allow her to speak to the voice that God has anointed her to open up. And I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. God will transform. When we talked in, in, in the beginning of the consecration, uh, the Lord had us go to, after we went to uh, Numbers, he had us go to 1 Samuel. And the Bible says in 1 Samuel, the 10th chapter, that God called Samuel up, I mean Saul up, and when he spoke to Saul, he said, the spirit of the Lord is going to come upon you, and he's going to turn you into another man. Yeah. 
The anointing will turn you into another man. Saul was shy, tall but timid. But when the Holy Ghost got through with him, he became a captain. Now the reverse will happen. God, you can be all swole and I'm this, but the anointing will turn you into another man. Now, you don't lose your masculinity, but he softens the heart to understand his purpose. And his purpose always supersedes our own agenda. I'm going to stop. Give him. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we honor you now. And we praise you now. Lift your hands. I pray for Dr. Watkins that Father, this anointing, you've promoted him throughout his years. But this anointing gives him the ultimate promotion. For your way up is down. Oh my young in the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank you for her humility. And I thank you for the gifts and the talents that you have given her. And now speak. There's a wind, there's a blowing. I know no more A fresh, come on church, a fresh wind. A fresh wind in her life, Lord. A fresh wind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mother Winans, someone aid Mother Winans, tell her to come. Daniel, help him. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I need somebody to give God praise. I thank you. I thank God for the move of the Spirit. Thank you. I just want, Mother Winans, I want you to lay hands upon her. Just lay your hands right here. And now the spirit of the mother. Pow! To teach. Oh, come on, church. Come on, church. It's an anointing. It's an, it's an anointing. It's an anointing. Oh! It's an anointing. I need you to give God praise. It's a, come on, open your mouth. Come on, come on, church, come on. Let's give God praise for what he's done for us today. Hallelujah. Come on, one more time for our class of 20, 2022. And as always, we have a... Pastor Taylor is coming. We have someone who always represents and speaks on behalf of the class, so we're going to ask Pastor Taylor to come and just have words. You can bring your wife with you if you want. Hallelujah. Let's say amen. Well, praise God.
This was a surprise, Bishop. <laughs> but we thank God for this convocation. It has blessed us, has filled us. And uh, Bishop, I think I've been renewed. I think I've been renewed. I think I've been revived to go on further in the work of the ministry. When we came, we actually came in Thursday, and the, the, the anointing was so heavy in the, in the house, I told the other candidates that it reminded me of when we were, first got married 41 years ago. We would go to Monumental Faith Evangelistic Church, Apostle Richard D. Hinton and of the, the, the Sunday night service at seven o'clock. And when you walk in the door, the anointing with the power would just hit you. And that same thing happened Thursday night. And last night, oh my God, oh my God, amen. Been renewed Bishop and on behalf of this class, these great men and women of God, we are so excited to be a part of this great fellowship my friend and brother, Pastor Ronnie Lee, we came up together and uh, he introduced me to the fellowship and uh, just told us so many great things about the fellowship and, uh, and we're excited and we're ready to work. We're ready to work, Bishop, and we thank God for you. God bless you. We love you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. God bless you, Pastor Taylor. And guess what? We have some work to come. Uh, our executive director will get us all up to speed. I want us to give a big God bless you to Pastor McClurkin for this message on today. Thank you, Pastor McClurk. And let's give another big God bless you to all of our PFI pastors and their spouses. And stand into your feet, our very own Bishop elect, Marvin L. Winans. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. And to our new PFI churches, God bless you. We look forward to the fellowship. As you will hear and continue to hear, we are an end time fellowship of churches focused on kingdom building, and we're going to continue the work that God has set in front of us. Well, Holy Convocation 2022 has gone down in PFI history. It's one of the best Holy Convocations that we have ever seen. And, and, and as a result, we will never be the same. And as a result, it will never be three days again either. We're going to five. We're going to extend it out Monday. And, and I want you to remember this. Write it down. Take notes. You'll see it coming out. Uh, uh, but remember, save the date. Uh, Holy Convocation 2023 will begin on Monday, May 22nd, and go through Saturday, May 27th. So please, please, please take note, take note, take note. As our bishop has asked, he wants us to be here each and every day. And as we learned through this convocation, that if you miss one thing, you've missed a lot. And so we want to make sure that you are here next year. And, and don't worry, don't worry. You say, Pastor Brown, I, I, what if I don't want to wait until next year? Connect to your PFI ecclesiastical elders because there will be regional services taking place up until the time of convocation next year. Come out and support the regional services and allow us to give God glory and give God praise. An opportunity for you to give him praise as you serve in those regional services. Amen. At this time, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for Holy Convocation 
2022. We thank you, O oh God, for the words that you have shared, words that have refreshed and recharged our spirits, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for what you have poured in, what you have imparted, O oh God. We thank you for the knowledge. We thank you for the wisdom. We thank you for each and every thing that you have given us today, O oh God. Now, God, allow it all to continue to fall on fertile soil. Allow it to produce, O oh God, that we will continue to see the results of Holy Convocation 2022, hence now and forevermore, O oh God. We honor you, Lord. We thank you, O oh God. We thank you for our bishop. We thank you, O oh God, for his lovely wife. We thank you, O oh God, for our international mother and all of the PFI pastors and their spouses. Have your way, O oh God, as we leave this place. We ask for your traveling grace and mercy, O oh God. Continue to watch over us, continue to keep us, continue to protect us, and continue to keep us in your will and as the apple of your eye. And we'll be so careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Before, before you exit, the ushers have refreshments on sale in the quarter. If you want a cold drink or a snack, they're right outside the sanctuary doors. Also, 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 for everyone's safety, please do not remove your masks until you have exited the building. Ushers, please help them as